but how well does a how, but how well can you test a network in a virtual environment? For example, are there vulnerabilities that you cannot find in a virtual environment but can be found in a live network? Um, yes, definitely. Uh, at least two cases come to my mind. First, um, um, first one is that if your like high-end server farms have lots of protocol offloading on hardware, like uh, fully speed optimized uh, network interface cards. Um, many of the fast test cases, especially with tools like our IP version six or IP version two, four tools. Um, they actually, or, or like TLS, encryption offloading is also one um, very dangerous target. Um, in those areas, you quite often actually corrupt the hardware itself and actually often break it completely. Um, and you cannot demonstrate those type of tests in, in a virtual setup. But for that purpose, you often want to have a spare unit of that high-end uh, platform for testing purposes only. And you often anyways want to have one just like a, a replacement unit that you can then um, go and switch with the real server. But with the same uh, network interface cards, with the same uh, functionality, the same protocol offloading, and you can connect that into your test lab and test for the low level uh, protocols. But for any application protocols, there shouldn't really be any difference if you are testing it um, in a virtual environment or in in the real products on hardware. Uh, the other um, special case is not really directly related to virtual virtual test environments, but in simulated environments. So, for example, if you are building software for the next generation coffee maker or uh, next generation fridge, and you have embedded code running in a very small um, device, basically. And in the simulation environment, you're actually running it on a PC. So of course, you have completely different types of resources available in the simulated environment. And many of the weaknesses, even though the tests completely pass in the simulated environment, they actually might break the embedded device. So if you are working with embedded devices, it's always um, critical to test uh, the system on the real hardware. Uh, that you are actually going to deploy it on. OK. And if you want to uh, specify your questions, uh, please send uh, more questions through the chat window or per email. Uh, now we're going to move to a new topic. Um, how do you distinguish zero-day bugs from just bugs? That's a really interesting topic because um, many times, and especially uh, with many of our customers, we have probably 200 plus companies uh, using our tools across the world. And in many of those uh, customers, it's actually quality assurance engineers running our tools before deploying the product. Uh, so if you find a bug in a product before it's deployed, it's just a bug. You uh, submit it into your uh, bug tracking systems. You m maybe label it as a security bug, or you label it as high priority. But it's not really a security bug before the product is released. But after the product is released, it immediately immediately turns into a zero day, because you don't know if someone else knows about the same problem. So zero day is basically something that other people might know about. Not necessarily something that you are sure that someone knows about, but um, it's really the kind of hacker slang for a mistake that the vendors don't necessarily know about, uh, but hackers do. So in that sense, there is no distinction. If you're working on the vendor side or if you're working in the um, like a system integrator side, um, if you actually build your own code and you find problems, they are just bugs. But if your end customer finds them, or if a hacker finds them, they are zero days because the vendor doesn't know about them. So it's a very confusing mix of terms. But. OK. And what if I find uh, 
zero day vulnerabilities in my own software, how do I go about fixing them? If you find some um, critical security problems in your own code, I think the most critical question is, uh, of course, um, how widely deployed your product is. And there's lots of different practices in, in how to actually get those uh, fixed. If you're doing open source project, then it's always public. Any change you do into the code, you will probably have hackers analyzing that what was that fix and is, was there a security problem and if it was, they will start building exploits. And then it's a race of your end users applying your update and the hackers exploiting that update. So the typical processes for um, security updates is that you build some kind of a, a pre-warning system at least for the critical customers so that um, your customers will know what to expect, that there will be a critical update coming out um, then and then and um, the actual details of the bugs are not necessarily released immediately but afterwards. So it's not an easy, easy uh, problem to solve and it completely depends on what type of product and what type of um, code you are building and what type of end customers you have. I think the best answer to the question is really contacting the local search organization and talking with them. Many of the uh, national certs are very well prepared in helping you in the disclosure process and at least can provide you some uh, contacts in how to do that. And of course, us at Codenomicon, we are available for uh, helping you as well. Thank you. Uh, how about a third party software? So how can I patch uh, third party software that I'm using before the software vendors themselves have created a patch for it? Um, well, that's looking at the same problem but from the other side. So when um, a third party finds problems in uh, someone else's code, there's quite a lot of different ways of getting those resolved. Um, most security companies, including Codenomicon, are always uh, ready to help in those um, cases. And also during our research at University of Oulu, we built a lot of uh, conference papers and publications around that process. Um, explaining all the different things that can go wrong when you start disclosing security problems in other people's code. Uh, so there isn't really any single right answer for that, but if, if you have any issues like that, we are definitely uh, ready to help at Codenomicon. And we also have direct contacts to most of the vendors, so it's very easy to fix those issues purely confidentially without anyone else ever hearing about those problems. So especially if you're building a critical system using third-party components, then often uh, it's in no one's interest to get any public disclosure on those issues. Um, the other um, most common solution is to um, contact your local CERT organization again and going through um, either some, some form of responsible disclosure process which typically ends in public disclosure in the end, but not necessarily. It depends on how prepared the local CERT organizations are in handling um, critical weaknesses. 